this edition of Create a Life You Love. Now, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Each and every one of us absolutely, positively has a purpose. And that purpose is sitting deep inside of us. And when the timing is right or the circumstances appear, your purpose will be known to you. Today, my guest is Danny Austin. She's an amazing, amazing woman, a great friend, and an expert realtor. Hi, Danny. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks for having me. Absolutely my pleasure. Now, Danny, I have a list of questions that have been emailed to me from everyone on my email list that wanted to know about you and your career. And the number one uh, most uh, requested question was, what, how did you know? What let you know that real estate was for you? Well, my, mine actually comes with a little story. It was kind of interesting. Um, I was actually looking for a house and um, was introduced and referred to a realtor that um, um, I just wasn't crazy about. Um, talked about money, was very arrogant, you know, always bragging about, you know, how much money he made. And I thought, man, if he can do this, I'll kill it. <laughs> and that was literally how I got into it. And I went to the courses and started and just found that I like it. And it was, it was I enjoyed helping people. Wonderful. So let's talk a little bit about where, um, where did you get your training? What what steps did you take to get that training and where did you get it? It's changed quite a bit. When I did it, um, it was a um, real estate school called Robbins and Lloyd. Yes. And um, now it's like if you go and you want to get into real estate, you can take it through the broker. You don't have to go, you know, to the classes. There's online. It's just changed so much since then. It's not a necessity to go and sit in the classroom. Right, and that's that's it's really nice to know that if somebody is thinking about becoming a realtor, they can do it part time at home in their spare time, and um, get that taken care of. Correct. Now, how long have you been in real estate? Uh, this is my twentieth year. Wow, yeah. <clears throat> that's a long time. Yep, that's amazing. <clears throat> and I still like it. So yeah, that's, that's that's how you know you're doing the right thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about the company that you work for. Okay. Where do you work? <clears throat> I work for First Weber. Okay. And First Weber is right now the uh, number one broker in the state of Wisconsin. We're actually um, owned by Warren Buffett. So um, we are part of Berkshire Hathaway family, um, which is the largest in the United States. Excellent, excellent. That's wonderful. Now. Um, <clears throat> I know that you have, but I'd like you to share with me now some of the awards that you won uh, being a realtor. Well, you know, it's interesting because you had asked about awards, and, and it's like I have many awards, but oh my it's not about the awards. It's about the reward, and it's about you helping people versus, you know, how much did you make last year? You know, right. I think in this business, if you focus on the money, it's not, it's not going to, you know, allow you to succeed. Right. So. Absolutely. Um, I think that the, re the awards are, you know, they, they're gratifying in their own way. But right. you're right. The reward is how many people do you get to help? Right. And that's kind of what the award signifies. Exactly. Listen, you've helped. It might be a dollar amount, but that dollar amount represents the right. number of people that you have helped along right. the way. Right. Um, and that, I think that's very, very important. It very is important. important. And, and um, at this point in my business, my business is mainly referrals. So as you help people throughout the years and they're satisfied with what you've done with them, done for them, then they will, you know, reward you by referring you to other people. Absolutely. I, I agree with that 100%. Um, now, I, I know, I personally know this, I know that you have mentored many people and you have a team. Mm -hmm. Now, so let's talk a little bit about your team and the people you've mentored and can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure, um, so I've always had, I started 
this by myself. And I think that you have to, to figure out your path and what you're going to do and what you're best at. And I've had assistance throughout the years. And, um, you know, some have worked and some haven't. Um, and then just recently, um, I was offered a assistant manager position. So then at that point, after 20 years of doing this, I knew I needed to develop a team so that, you know, my clients, past clients and future clients will be taken care of. So at that time, I had an assistant and her name is Abby. And when I was offered this opportunity, I decided I needed more people. So I added on Steve and Cassie. So I managed a team of four, including myself. And nice. then um, as far as mentoring, I train the new agents as they come into the office. Very so nice. I have a pretty, pretty large family of agents that I work Isn't with. that, it's, it's amazing though, because in having this large family, everybody's working together mm -hmm. and you're all helping each other. Right. Which is, I think that's really important with any agency um, that someone would want to work with. Um, you know, it, it is, it's, it's, a, it's a culture. I mean, it really is, and you have to be able to create an atmosphere in an office that people want to be in, and we right. definitely have that. So when somebody is looking for a real estate company, most of the time they go by the person that they're recommended to mm -hmm. without thinking about the company, but why is it important for people to think about the company that they're recommended to, that the company they're working with? Well. There's many, many facets to that. I mean, the one thing is that what is the company's, what, who do they care the most about? You know, the customer, the client, and the agent being able to serve that client. And if we can, as a company, provide them the tools to provide the best service. Um, one of the things that First Weber does, um, we put out a survey, and we've got a 98% customer satisfaction, um, you know, across the board. Um, we've got... The other thing with our company is we work more as a team. Um, we've got over 70 offices and 1,200 agents across the company, um, across the state. Um, they also need to be able to be up on technology and tools. Things have changed so much, and First Weber provides their agents with the top of the line, you know, tools. And it's not they don't charge large fees for it. They make sure that we have all the tools so that we can market the property, we can establish the client's house on the internet and, and provide the service that they need to find the right buyer. I, I, yeah, that's really important. Um, I, know some, I know of some companies, and I understand from talking to other people who have worked at those companies the way they work, and there's one company in particular that I will not name, but they don't, when you work with one of their realtors, they, their uh, policy is our listings first. So there might be a listing that's perfect for you that you will never, you know, really get to see because they're pushing their own personal listings first. See, and I think that that's, that comes down to ethics. I mean, if you are really working for the client, that's not an ethical way to do business. Exactly. And I think that that's number one, number one thing at First Weber is the training and the ethics. It's important. And it, it's interesting how if you don't fit in to our culture and our ethical standards, it's like they just, they just move on. They just go away. So it's really kind of a, it's neat. It, it is. Nothing needs to be done with it because they just don't fit in. Absolutely. Now we've talked about how, what, what type of company you should definitely what you should look for in a company. Now, what should a person look for in a realtor? Um, somebody that's honest with them, somebody that you can communicate with. It, it's a relationship, and it has to be one that you can respect each other. Um, I always said that as a realtor, it, you may, I may not tell you what you want to hear, but I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, and that's the relationship that you need. Um, somebody that's going to have constant communication. I mean, this process can be, it can be difficult. So yeah. whether it's good news or bad news, you've got to have a realtor that's going to pick up the phone and talk to you. And I think, too, it's a very emotional, for most mm -hmm. people, especially first-time buyers, mm -hmm. it's an extremely emotional uh, roller coaster mm -hmm. ride. You know, you see a house, you fall in love with it, you can't afford it, or maybe it's a little bit above what you're approved for, or 
you know, you, you, you're seeing houses and they're just not the right fit for you. Um, so having somebody, I think, too, that really listens mm -hmm. and gives you what you want is just as important as, and, and it, it kind of, I don't want to use the word intuitively, but kind of gets mm -hmm. a sense of what their client is also looking for, even if the, their, their uh, client isn't necessarily able to state it completely. Well, and that's all about getting to know your client, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, most of my clients, in the end, they become friends because you do get to know them that well. And you can walk into a property and go, oh, my, this will be perfect for so-and-so because you know their needs and you know what they want. And yeah. you can also walk into a property, and if they're, you know, thinking that this is the, it for them, you can also be, you know, ethical enough to say, hey, what about this? What about this? Are you sure this is going to work for you? Um, right. I think that's also part of our job. I think that, yeah, it, absolutely. Because in the end, if the person, if every part of the purchase fits them, mm -hmm. they're going to be so happy with you. And right. I know you go above and beyond mm -hmm. to make sure that that's fact for each person that you work with. Well, and if you want referral business, that's what you should do because this yeah. is a referral business. And if that person is satisfied with you and they, you know, are happy, they're going to they're gonna pass on your name. Now, you work with first-time home buyers? I work with all of and them. And second-time yes. yep. home buyers? And investors and, <laughs> and commercial investors. and, um, you know, second home, you know. Um, I've sold farms. It's, you know, it's just over the years. You get, you get involved. I've done new construction, vacant land. Um, and as these opportunities you know, come up, you, uh, you get involved and you, you, you learn and you become an expert at them. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so uh, one other qu uh, quick question ab about, uh, you, you know, you work with a lot of different uh, buyers, but you're also you also list oh, yeah. a lot of different properties. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about. Uh, take a moment to explain. Uh, first, what type of properties you list, and second, the get ready to list process yeah. for people. Because <laughs> a lot of people, right. they really it's their home. They go, no, right. I like it like right. this. Everybody's going to love it like right. this, right? Right. So. Well. Um, so I do, probably the majority of my business is listing. As you start in the business, you may work with a lot more buyers, but now I'd say probably 70% of my business is, you know, listing real estate. And um, mainly residential, but investment, um, some commercial. It just depends on, you know, who reaches out and what the opportunities are. Um, but as far as preparing your house, I always say we all improve to move. We all improved to move because you live in it. And even when I sold my house uh, last year, and I put about ten thousand dollars into it because I, it was okay for me, you know, that front door, or that window, or whatever it was, or that flooring. Um, but it all had to be done before I put it on the market. So right, and that's and that's part of it. And let's talk about this. You put approximately ten thousand into it, but what did that? What difference did that make in the? Point of selling the selling oh, price probably in that market it was a very fast market and we it probably made probably a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar difference so even though it was it, right. you you definitely got more back than you put yeah and it depends on where you put it I mean there's exactly. certain areas you don't put it in because you're not going to get it back but you know they always say your your bathrooms and your kitchens and you know buyers don't even like to paint anymore yeah, you know? yeah, unless they're really into the Art Deco right. or the really vibrant colors. Right. Now, do you stage homes when you list them, or do you tell your clients to stage them or what to put where? My particular house, I had the whole house staged, physically staged, and because I've got, obviously, a friend in the business, and she had a lot of furniture at the time, so we kind of worked something out. But now, with technology, um, I can digitally stage houses. So vacant properties, we can digitally stage every room. And it's just done with technology. Very nice. So, and it's nice because then a buyer can actually see the possibilities of what they can do, you know, because most people aren't as visual when it comes to buying or, you know, they like to see things in place. So, 
perfect. Now let me ask you, um, when you're listing home and you and Fort First Weber have a number of ways that you can list a home, uh, everybody's on MLS, that's across the board equal, but there are tools that you use that give you an advantage when mm -hmm. listing a home. For example, digitally staging, mm -hmm. uh, video, what are some of your favorite tools to use when you're listing somebody's home? Um, I use all professional photography. I do nice. 3D tours, so you can basically go online and you can walk through the house on your computer. We consider that the first showing. The second showing is when they actually come into the house. So they can physically walk through, see the space, spin around, go upstairs, downstairs, and see the entire house. Um, and then uh, depending on what the property is, a lot of drone videos so that you can see, you know, the landscape and, you know, the area, the neighborhood. Um, now, 20 years ago. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. Progress. It's I so know. beautiful. I love I the technology. I know. The, the technology we have today just enables so much for us, right? It's, it's so, so awesome. It does. It's so efficient, too. Yeah. You know, it's efficient for me. And then those rooms are all digitally measured as well. So all the rooms are accurately measured. You get nice. the square footage. It's very, it's convenient on both ends. Very cool. I need to get back to my list because <laughs> <laughs> I want to be able to ask you all of these questions. Okay, so I know you do, um, when uh, you work with investors, mm -hmm. and working with investors is a little bit different than working with um, somebody who's buying a first-time home or a second-time home, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. But you, you do have that experience and you come uh, prepared and, and you know what oh, they're yeah. looking for. Well, I've, yeah. I've actually flipped houses myself. So I know that, I mean, they make their money on the buy. They don't make it on the sell. So if they're coming in, their attitude is very different on price than, you know, a first time home buyer. And what they're looking for right. is very different yeah. than a f first time home buyer. Yeah. What somebody who's buying to live is looking for everything done, yep. no maintenance, don't want to have to... Correct. Fix anything where the investor can in, be visual. Yeah, they can say they can see what they can make it into. Correct. That's going to lead possibly to a bigger profit margin or a higher rent. Right, exactly. Because a lot of people, you know, a lot of investments aren't um, aren't um, aren't. They say. Uh, let me rephrase that. Sorry. They say property investment can be the best possible investment you can make over other types mm -hmm. of investment because if you're in it for the long haul yep. that property you'll pay it off and if you're renting it out yep. so if somebody's <clears throat> interested in becoming a uh, a, a landlord mm -hmm. or a pro what what do they do they still call them landlords or what do they call somebody who has a lot of rental properties now I, I <laughs> guess it's a landlord I'm, yeah. a land king uh, yeah exactly. <laughs> I don't know um, yeah the ones that practice the buy and hold yeah, yeah there's, that's, there's is that a lot, the title yeah. for it buy yeah. and hold yeah yeah nice yeah so then you know that can be long term investing that can be retirement you exactly. know and there's a lot of investors that do single family buy and hold you know they may buy it low fix it up and then they put a tenant in it and yeah. um, still a lot of that so oh, yeah. it's a smart way to build your retirement and then the people who want to flip it's a completely different ball yep. game for them correct yes yep. the numbers are different yep yeah yeah so now you've mentioned you've done investing in the past mm -hmm. you've flipped homes homes in the past mm -hmm. and you still do you still dabble with that just a little bit yes i have a project right now in west dallas that I'm working i on, love so. that yes. i love yeah. that now that has to be very rewarding to be able to go in and just create a new space or fix up a space and provide that home for somebody it is it is yeah. and it, it it can be taxing depending on the municipality and how much you have to go through to provide that space but um it is it's really when you take something that you know was uh, you know an original owner and they owned it for 70 years or whatever and then you open it all up and you know put current you know and modern give look it a little it. facelift yeah, yeah. it's it <laughs> yeah. is rewarding and yeah. um in our marketplace too they sell quickly because buyers are looking for everything to be done they just exactly. want to move in so when you go in and you update everything people it's it's what you i think you call walk in ready yeah is that move accurate? in ready yeah move in yep. move in ready yep. correct okay awesome um now here's a good question. What advice 
would you give somebody who's wanting to purchase a property? What are those steps that every property <clears throat> purchaser is going to need to take and things they're going to have to have? Because people think, I, I want to buy a house. So they call you, I want to buy a house and I, I want a, a $300,000 house. And you're, the fir your first question is, are you? Pre-approved. And they'll go, oh. Yeah. What, yeah. What's that? Is Does right. that happen to you often? You know, it, it happened a lot in the beginning, but it okay. doesn't as much. I mean, people are a little more educated now that they know, and it, it just depends on the generation. I mean, there's a generation of millennials that are saving and saving and saving because they don't want to have a huge mortgage. Right. Um, but most people know, and if they haven't, I can refer them to lenders, get them through that process, and get that started because it's, there's nothing worse than going into a house that you can't afford and you find out later you can't afford it. It's right. really hard to go back down. It's a lot easier to go up, but it's really hard to go back down. Because w when you walk in and anybody who has looked at a house, anybody who has has walked through a house and thought, even when, when there's so many shows, yeah, TV shows out there right now, and, all that stuff, yeah. Yeah. and they're beautiful, mm -hmm. and then you look at, you know, this is the dream, this is living the dream, yeah. this is like MTV Cribs mm -hmm. <laughs> compared to Oh, this is what I can afford. This is what can I, I can afford. This is yeah. what's realistic for yeah. me. Not that what's realistic isn't beautiful and nice, and but it's right. yeah. You want to know when you go in, right? And exactly. And, and I think you also have to have a realtor that's going to be that honest with you too, because if they're just going to put you in your car in their in their car and go out and drive around and look at properties, and you haven't done the preliminary stuff that you needed to. It can be really disappointing. And um, I've heard way too many stories about things like that. Yeah, and you know, one thing I have personally experienced in the past years ago, um, and it, it, again, it was the first time I purchased and I had no idea, um, but the push to upsell, the push to get you into that. You know, I came in and I was adamant I was like, this is my price point. That's it. Mm -hmm. But And then showing um, this particular realtor was interesting. Showed me the worst houses in that price point. Like, I literally walked up the steps of a house and said, I can't go in there. I can't stand the smell from out here. There's no way I'm walking in there. And my price point at that time was nice mm -hmm. and they didn't have all the internet stuff boy I am giving my yeah. age away <laughs> <laughs> but but to try to push me up and say well then you have to go into the next price point that was the tactic I didn't realize that at that time see and I don't understand that tactic at all because I sit down with people and say listen you're probably gonna go into a lender they're gonna tell you you can afford this much but you may be comfortable here. Um, so I just tell them, you have to write that check every month. Yeah. And you have to be comfortable writing that check. And you have to be able to still go out and do your things and have dinner. And, you know, and that's, that price point is your price point. It's not mine. I don't determine that. And the one thing people don't realize, and I had a really good, um, my, although my realtor was a poo, my mortgage, my, that the lender, was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I was so blessed to get this lender and he said, what do you have put away for an emergency? And I looked at him and I, here's me not knowing anything about it. I'm like, like a hair emergency? <laughs> and he's like, no, if something breaks in the house. Yeah. That, that thought hadn't even crossed mm -hmm. my mind at that point, but he was really great and really, um, really um, helped me with that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, knowing that you need to have this much aside, just your just in case money, right. your all of that, that's that's really good. And and I know personally, I know that you will sit down with whomever comes to you and anyone on your team would do the same thing. Exactly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I want you to tell people how they can get a hold of you now. Uh, what's your website? How can they reach you via the web? Okay, it's the Austin, uh, Austin Route team at firstweber.com. Um, cell phone is 414-788-3264. 
Um, and you can call the team at 262-646-6800. That's our office. But okay. there's myself, um, Abby, Steve, and Cassie. And if somebody wants to be a member of your team, would they reach out to that same? Yes, they can Those contact me on my cell phone. Yeah. Okay. So awesome. Yeah. I love that, and I love you, Danny. I love you so much. I know you are as as amazing as your work is, and as powerful as you are. You're one of the kindest oh. people and the sweetest people, and you genuinely love putting people in a home Absolutely. that they are going to love and cherish. And I know that about you. Yeah. I absolutely, absolutely know that about thank you. you. Welcome. Thank you. I want to thank you for joining us today on this edition of Create a Life You Love with Tony G and Danny Austin. If you're looking for a home, if you want to change homes, if you want to invest, please consider contacting Danny. Until next time, thank you for joining us and have a great day.